Welcome back. My name is Jim Caseman. We're talking about how to get to know God intimately. And in order to do that, we have to study the entire council of God's Word. That would be the Old Blood Covenant and the New Blood Covenant. Of course, we live in the New, where the letters to the church are. But yet, we still need to examine the entire Bible in order to understand in its entirety exactly why God does what He does and, and how He thinks and, and all of this, so that we can get to know Him. If you're going to get to know somebody intimately, you need to know what he's thinking and why he's doing what he does. And that's what we've been attempting to accomplish in all of our times together. Now, we're talking now and have been talking for some weeks on not without blood. Not without blood. And the subject of blood being talked about more than any other subject in the scriptures. Now, we've worked our way through the old blood covenant and we're just getting a good start in the new blood covenant. And so then... We, uh, um, uh, we're just taking specific things in the scriptures that, uh, that have to do with the blood and why it's important that we be conscious of his blood. Now, let's, let's slip over to physical healing. Now, we've been talking about, you know, our, our sins have been forgiven, the debt, the guilt is paid, and all of that. And, and, and so then, that is, helps, uh, helps us to become more confident spiritually and stronger in faith in God. But then God also has provided redemption for the human body. Now, even though when we get born again, you and I, our nature changes. And like we said in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, we become new creations in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. The old gem's dead. And now it's a whole new gem. All right, but now nothing changes, though, with your thinking and with your physical body. You know, um, Romans chapter 12, beginning verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. All right. So first of all, our minds have to be renewed. In other words, we still, when we're born again, we still think, our thinking is still the same as it was before we asked Jesus to come into our heart. But as we continue to meditate on God's word and read God's word and listen to the word that's being preached and what have you, eventually our thinking changes. And now we begin to see that, uh-oh, we need to think like God thinks. We need to act like God acts. And we get our whole mind renewed so that it comes in line with the Word of God. But now also when it comes to our bodies, our bodies still have death in them. They still have that sinful, lustful desires of the flesh. Remember, we talked in some depth about, about uh, your flesh in Galatians 5, 16. It says that we are to what? Walk in the Spirit. Well, the Holy Spirit is also called the Spirit of Holiness. So you can say, walk in the spirit of holiness, walk in holiness, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So the flesh still has sinful, lustful desires in it. That has not changed. The world is Satan is, another name for Satan is death. Death is everywhere in this physical dimension, and death is in our physical body. So our physical body has a lot in common with the physical world. But now you and I, as human spirits that are born again, and now we've taken on the nature of God, his love nature, <laughs> and, and we have been given the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, you and I are to present our bodies holy. In other words, if our body is tempted to do something that's sinful, that maybe we used to do before we were Christians, to think on, to see, or listen to, uh, we'll have to say to our bodies, hey, flesh, we don't do that anymore. We don't do that anymore. I'm, I'm born again. I'm holy. I'm part of God's family now. And God's word says, I'm to present you, and I'm talking to my body now, <laughs> you, holy. In other words, to be holy, that means you don't sin. I'm not going to let you do the, fulfill those sinful, lustful desires. Now I'm talking to my body. <laughs> no, you're not going to do this anymore. We used to do that, but we don't do that anymore. Now, I'm told in the scriptures to present you, body, uh, holy. So we're not going to yield to sinful lusts anymore. We don't do those things. And so God needs our body. Even though it has sinful lusts and desires in it, remember that God is a spirit. 
he does not have a body. And in order for God to work in this physical dimension, he needs to have a physical body to work through. And guess what? Today, because of Jesus, now when Jesus was on the earth, he was one physical body with God living inside of him. But now that Jesus has, through his death, burial, and resurrection, and his ascension into heaven as our high priest, every, countless people are born again now. And they become what's called in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 16 to 18, we become holy living temples for God to live inside of. Living temples. We are temples of God, all because of the blood of Jesus Christ. I'll just take you right here to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and look at here at verse 16. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him, for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. So you and I as human spirits are living temples of God. But then in just 1 Corinthians 6, just three chapters later, verse 19 of 1 Corinthians 6, 19, or do you, now who is he talking to? Remember, you've got to understand the difference between spirit, soul, and body. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 I pray, God, that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless. All right, so now as you understand that, or do you? Now, who is he talking to? You, the human spirit. You, the human spirit. He's not talking to your body. He's talking to you. The scriptures are speaking to the human spirit, not to the physical body. Or do you, human spirit? Or do you not know that your body, see, you and your body are two different things. Or do you not know, you, that's the human spirit, that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Uh-huh. So now in 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17, when it says you are, it says, do you not know that you are the temple of God? He's talking to the human spirit. That's the living temple of God. Now here he says, do you not know that your body is the temple? Now, it's your body that's the temple of the Holy Spirit. Why? Who is in... Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you? You. That's the human spirit. So, God lives in you, the human spirit. You are a temple of God. And because you are the temple of God... You live inside of this physical body, and so now this physical body is also the temple of God because you are in it and God is in you. <laughs> Whom you have from God and you are not your own. See, I'm not my own. I belong to God. For you are bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. It's a common phrase, you know, I seem to hear with people in the world. This is my body and I can do with it whatever I want to. Sorry, it's not your body. It belongs to God. So you can't abuse it. You can't uh, go and mess it up in any way you want to. Uh, it is the body, your body. You and your body belong to God. It's that simple. All because of what? The blood of Jesus Christ. I would not be a living temple of God that Jesus had and through his death, burial, and resurrection, through his shed blood, made it possible for me to be born again. And now that I'm born again, I'm a living temple of God and I live inside of a physical body. None of this would be possible if it wouldn't be for the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I can't help but get excited the more and more I talk about God. Well, I trust you got something out of that today. Uh, so, until next time, you just be blessed in everything that you set your hands to do. Glory to God.